back again to another UML tutorial. And in this tutorial, I'm going to continue building on the topic of inheritance and demonstrate how you can model abstract classes and abstract methods. For that, uh, let's go back to the code that I generated in a previous tutorial, and which relates to a gadget, which is a superclass of smart glasses and smartphone and demonstrate, start by demonstrating a little problem, which is not really a problem, only a problem in some cases. So I can create an instance of smartphone, which I've demonstrated last time, but I can also create an instance of gadget. Yeah, so this is the instance, and I can actually go and set the properties. Okay, so when does this become a problem? This becomes a problem in situations in which uh, the superclass is so generic that it doesn't really make sense as a concept. Uh, in this case it means the gadget is such a generic term that even though there are many gadgets in the world, there's no such thing as a generic gadget that is referred to as a gadget. It's always a specific type of gadget, like the smartphone and the smart glasses. So ideally, I would want uh, it to be possible not to create an instance of my gadget class. And we can do that by making the class named gadget abstract, uh, meaning it is defined as a class. Uh, subclasses can inherit from it, but you cannot create an instance of this class. You cannot create an object like I'm doing here. A abstract class can contain methods with logic, that's not a problem, just like any other class. You can even inherit from them, but uh, say if you have a situation in which you want all the subclasses to create a method, to implement a method, but not provide an implementation in your superclass, you can also create a method abstract, meaning an abstract method has no implementation, but your subclasses are forced to implement it. So how do we model that? Well, let's go back to the inheritance example from the previous video. So in this case, like I said, I don't want my gadget to be a regular class. So, uh, it's an, I've already attached the Java profile, which is a requirement in order to do that. So, what I'm going to do is I first of all set it as is abstract, but then next to that I need to go to my Java profile and set the is abstract boolean to true. There we go. So now the class is abstract, you can even see that uh, the name and the stereotype have become uh, italic. Okay, now for the method, say if I want to have a method called uh, display info, and the info for a smartphone and the smart glasses is quite different, so I don't want to provide an implementation, but I do want to force smartphone and smart glasses to create their own implementation, I'm also going to set this to true, is abstract and then go to the uh, Java method stereotype and also set the is abstract to true. So again, this has also become italic. All right, so now if I go to the, for example, the smartphone class, I can actually use the filters to say, hey, there is a abstract method inside a superclass. I want that one to be visible. Just so I know that the method defined here needs to be implemented here and therefore is part of this actual class. So same thing for smart glasses. There we go. Yeah, and just to prove that these two are connected, I'm just going to very quickly change the name. See, see, as you can see, uh, when I change the name of the superclass, the abstract method there, the subclasses are also changing along because they are forced to implement this method. Okay. So what does this look like in code? Well, let's once again uh, generate the code. So again, I need to rename my previous project for a moment, which is the overloading example. Okay, there we go. Okay, let's generate some Java code. Okay, so there we are. So we have the gadget class, which has now become abstract and has a public 
abstract void display info uh, method, which again just has a semicolon here, no implementation. While the smart glasses are basically have an actual method of display info because they are forced to implement it. Okay, um, in a separate video, I show in detail how to do this uh, abstract class in code. I'm going to so in this video I'm just going to very quickly prove that this actually works. If I now intend to create an instance of gadget, I am not able to do that. As a matter of fact, it will tell me cannot instantiate the type gadget. Why? Because it's an abstract class and abstract classes are not allowed to have instances created of it. Okay, so that's in a nutshell how you model abstract classes and abstract methods in uh, UML. So that's all for today. See you next time. Mm -hmm.